Hi and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, just as a summary, I'm going through the GCSE Edexcel Maths Higher 91 syllabus. You can also use my videos if you're doing the foundation as well. I will try to define which videos are specifically for the higher syllabus. So this is a video on fractions. So this is part one of the fractions. So this is a major topic you need to have a good understanding of. And it's this the same way as you are doing the fundamental operations, because the fundamental operation is the very key topic, is the key topic for maths in everything. But uh, fractions is also a very, very, a very key topic to almost all of the maths. So let's start with what actually is a fraction. So what is a fraction? A fraction is a part of a whole number. So it's not actually a whole number. A fraction is less than one, but more than zero. And unless if it's an improper fraction, improper fraction is basically anything that's more than one. So I, for this course, um, for the time being, we're only going to be considering a fraction that is less than one. So that's a normal fraction. Improper fractions we're going to be considering later down the line. So Fraction is sometimes a visual or mathematical representation of a decimal number. So what I mean by this is, so <clears throat> if you take 0 0.33333 and, it, and it's a recurring, so it's 0 0.33 and it never ends. So instead of using 0 0.333, you use 1 over 3. Whereas if you think about it, if you write 0 0.333 and all the way along all in all the pages, it's going to get tiring. So you use 1 over 3 as a much easier way of um, calculating things and it's also to a greater accuracy say for example if you are a scientist and you're doing uh, I don't know building a rocket or something if you are representing a number in this form like 0 0.333 it's much easier for you to use 1 over 3 because it's more accurate and using 0 0.333 is not accurate because it doesn't always give the most accurate answer. So a fraction has two parts, the numerator and the denominator. So let's look at closely how to think of fractions. So let's take a small example. So here in this picture there are 11 ice cream bars and you and say for example you ate four of these bars. So what fraction of the total ice cream bars did you eat? Well, let's take a look at this. So the fraction of the ice cream bars that you actually ate was 4 over 11. So let's look at this one by one. So the number on top, the 4. So this is the number of ice cream that you ate. And the number on bottom is the total number of bars available before eating. So the 4 is called the numerator, while the 11 is called the denominator. So the numerator and the denominator make up the fraction. They are, uh, they are always in the same place. So the numerator is always at the top and denominator is always at the bottom. So let's move on. So simplifying fractions. So what does it mean when you're simplifying a fraction? Simplifying a fraction is when you're making the top and the bottom of the fraction into as smallest numbers as possible. So when you're doing this, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to put one and one, or one on top and one on bottom, because that would be wrong. Because each and individual fractions, they have different values of decimal places. So you can't just randomly change everything and there is always a procedure when you have to change it, when you can actually change it. So whatever you do to the top, you need to do it to the bottom. So this is a very, very important rule. You must remember this always when dealing with fractions. Okay, so you can turn the fraction into a decimal by dividing the top number by the bottom number. So, in other words, dividing the numerator by the denominator. 
So this decimal value is always the same regardless if the fraction is simplest. So this, uh, so with this, uh, with this in mind, the last uh, sentence, uh, with this in mind, you can always check if your answer is right or wrong. Uh, if you have a calculator at hand, or if you can divide the numbers together, then you can always check if it's if your answer is right or wrong by comparing if it's the same um, name uh, if it's the same decimal place or not. So let's look at how uh, to actually simplify fractions. So steps for simplifying. So first is to find the prime factor decomposition for numerator and denominator. So if you don't know what the prime factor decomposition is, so prime factor is, uh, pr well, prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one and itself. And when it says prime factor decomposition, it means when you're breaking down a number into its prime factors. So you're breaking down a number into how many prime numbers fit into that number. So if, you, uh, if you're not entirely sure about this, then please do check out the video in my uh, YouTube channel on the prime factor decomposition. So step two is to write the prime factors in the place of the numerator and denominator as a fraction. Third is to cancel out the numbers from top and bottom, which are same at the same time. So when I say which are same at the same time, it means when you are, when you have prime factors on top and when you, when you have prime factors on bottom, you're cancelling the top one by the bottom one, top one by the bottom one. You're always cancelling in pairs, you're not cancelling in one, two, three, uh, cross off from the top and one, two, three, cross off from the bottom. You can do that, but it's when you have a greater amount of practice. So write this, uh, so the fourth step and final step is write the simplified version as a fraction and double check if the decimal value is the same for both fractions. So when I say both fractions, is uh, so the first fraction is the one you actually start off with and the second fraction is the one that you finish with. So that's a simplified fraction. So you just need to divide those two numbers together and just see if you get the correct answer. Lastly, let's look at some examples. So for uh, before we move into the actual examples, let's look at what actually simplify means. So let's take a small example. So if there is a pie and you cut it into eight pieces and you have two of those pieces, what fraction of the pie did you eat? So if you want to have a go at uh, yourself, you can quickly pause the video and then have a try at yourself. If not, let's move forward. So here is a pie. So here you have eight pieces and you take out two of those pieces. So, so here you have eight pieces and uh, in total, and you took out two of those pieces. So, what is what is the fraction that you actually ate? So the fraction you actually ate is. 2 over 8. So that's a fraction you actually ate. So what does it mean when simplifying? So when simplifying, it's the same as saying, if so when you're simplifying the 2 over 8, it's the same as saying, if you cut the pie into 4 pieces instead of 8, you would uh, have eaten 1 slice. So why is this? So when you simplify the 2 over 8, it becomes 1 over 4, where 1 over 4 is the simplified fraction. So if you take 1 over 4, that's the same as saying if you cut the whole pie into 4 pieces and you had 1 slice or 1 piece. So bear in mind, when I say uh, when you have um, 8 pieces and 4 pieces and all that stuff, so this pie is always the same size. It, it will never change because the decimal place value the value of this is always the same as the value of this. It can never change. If it does change, then your answer will be wrong. So let's take a look at an example. So this is example one, simplifying. 
So first step is to do the prime factor decomposition. So let's take a look at 24. Let's break out the 24 into, I, what I always do is I always break it down uh, using the first uh, few prime numbers. So the first prime number I always go to is two, because that's the easiest one you can always use. So dividing uh, 24 by two, that gives 12. So two can't be broken down any further, you break down 12. When you break down 12, you break that down into two and six. Two can't be divided into anything further, so you break down six. And six can be broken down into two and three. So since all of these are prime numbers, you can go ahead and circle them. Usually it's always a best practice to circle uh, these prime numbers because then you know that these are prime numbers and you have finished working it out. And when you are uh, in exam conditions, it's usually best to circle them because then you don't get it, you don't get it confused with anything else. Let's move on to 56. So 56, same as before, you, I break it down into two, uh, break, take out the two, and that gives me 28. So breaking 28 down, it gives me two and 14. Breaking the 14 down, it gives me two and seven. And all of these are prime numbers, so I go ahead and circle them as well. Now, the second step is simplifying. So simplifying this down. So simplifying, it kind of covers the other things as well. So first, write down the original fraction that you started off with. Then write down its prime factor, uh, prime factors like this. So the prime factors of 24 is two times two times two times three. And the prime factors of 56 is two times two times two times seven. So what you can see now is you have the same numbers, some na same numbers on top and some same numbers on bottom. Now what you do is you cancel it out one uh, pair by pair. So the, you cancel out the first two, then the second two, then the third two. Now you're left off with three over seven. So this will be the simplified version. So simplified fraction of 24 over 56. Now, if you um, take a calculator out and then if you actually see what the values are, what you can see is three over seven is actually 0 0.4286. So that's the value of three over seven. Now, if you take the 24 and div uh, divide it by 56, that's the same as saying 0.2486. So these are both the same values. So because they're both the same values, I know that three over seven is actually the simplified version for the simplified fraction of 24 over 56. Now let's move on to the second example, simplifying fractions. Same as before, we're gonna start off with the prime factor decomposition. Let's start off with 108. So I'm gonna break it down into two and 54. I'm going to break down the 54 into 2 and 27, break the 27 down into 3 and 9, break the 9 down into 3 and 3. These are all the prime fact, uh, prime fact, prime numbers, so I put a circle around each and every one of them. Now I'm moving on to 300. I break that down into 3 and 100, break the 100 down into 2 and 50, break the 50 down into 2 and 25, break the 25 down into five and five. These are all prime factors, uh, prime numbers, so put a circle around them. Now, simplifying. Now I'm gonna write down the, it's always best practice to write down the original fraction again, because then you don't miss, uh, you don't like put the 300 ones on top and 108 ones on bottom. So put the uh, prime factors for 108 on top, and put the prime factors for hun uh, 300 on bottom. And then you cancel out the two, and then you cancel out the second set of twos, then you cancel out the first set of threes, and these are all the ones that can cancel out. Now you're just left with three times three on top, 
and five times five on bottom. And then you simplify that and that gives you an answer of nine over 25. So this is how you simplify the fractions. Now then let's move on to adding fractions. So the first thing you need to do when adding fractions is when doing uh, sorry uh, when doing this I will show you what the steps you need to do and uh, need to take and I will discuss what the steps mean. So firstly make the denominator the same for the fraction that's being added. So uh, um, so when I say I said fractions. So both the fractions, so the first fraction and second fraction, you need to make the denominators same. So this is done by finding the lowest common multiple of both the denominator values. So I will talk that. Uh, so you can always do this using the Venn diagram by um, using the prime factor decomposition. That's the easiest way to do it. Or you can just remember through the multiplication whatever whichever is easier but most of the time is the prime factor decomposition is easier so now what you do is do whatever you did to the top to the bottom for that fraction to get it into that denominator value now thirdly you add up the numerators fourthly you simplify so these are the four steps when adding fractions so explanation so step one, so as I said before, so in this, the denominators are made the same or to a lowest common multiple because it will make the fraction the same. So in this, so let's take a small example. So if we take a pie and once you cut a pie, you cannot uncut it. You can't just undo what you did to the pie. So once you cut it into eight pieces, you can't stick it back together and make it into four pieces or something. So you can't change what you did. So the same way what you can do is, so if there is a group of people and there are two pies and same as before, same as the example that I used before, um, instead there are gonna be two pies and these pies both are gonna be the same size. So one pie is cut into eight pieces and the other is cut into four pieces. So if you take, if you think about it, one is into eight pieces, one into four pieces. So to make both of these equal, what you can do is you can cut the four piece pie into an eight piece pie because that's the easiest way because you can't uncut the eight piece pie into a four piece pie. So what you do is you cut the four piece pie into an eight piece pie. So it's much easier for the person who's trying to share out the pie equally. Otherwise, if you do not cut the pie into uh, another four pieces, this would mean that you will get more pie than the other person. So this would be unfair. So what this is, bear in mind, this is, and this pie is actually being shared amongst a group of people. So once you have the pie cut into equal pieces, it is much easier to share out these pieces. So it's kind of why you, you make the denominator the same. So when you're adding something, you need to make both of the fractions into the same denominator because the same denominator will mean that both of the fractions are in the same page, if you think about it. So let's look at an example. So example three, adding. So first thing you need to do is make the denominators the same. So using the lowest common multiple, uh, using the common lowest common multiple, we found for this fractions, for both of these fractions, the lowest common multiple is 20. So on the uh, right hand side over here, as you can see, there's the four times table and there's a five times table. So on the uh, four times table, if you go down, you have the 20 over here. And in the five times table, you have the 20 over here. So this is the value that both of these share and thus the smallest value both of these uh, multiplication tables uh, share. So this is the lowest common multiple. So in order to get to 20, you need to, do, you need to multiply four by five and five by four. So 
what you need now need to do is you need to actually multiply into the its normal fraction so you have the first fraction that is here so as you remember from uh, the previous slides you need to do whatever you do to the top you need to do to the bottom so you need to do 3 times 5 on top and 4 times 5 because 4 times 5 would give you 20 and 20 is the denominator that we're making up to and the add and it's the second fraction so which is 1 times 4 and 5 times 4 as you can see here 5 times 4 gives you 20 now you simplify so 3 times 5 over 4 times 5 gives you 15 over 20 and then you have 1 times 4 over 5 times 4 that gives you 4 over 20 so once you have this what you need to do is you need to because these denominators are the same you're not going to add them together it's just going to come underneath um like this so it's going to be f so when you're adding you only add the numerators you never add the denominators so you add the numerators so it's going to be 15 plus 4 over 20 which is going to be 19 over 20. okay let's look at another example so this is you have 3 over 4 and then you have add 1 over 2. So if you want to have a go at this uh, question, you can pause the video now and then have a go at yourself. If not, let's uh, take a look at this. So the first thing, like always, you need to make the denominator the same. So lowest common multiple is 4 because 4 times 1 is 4 and 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so now what you do is you need to do whatever you do to the top, you need to do to the bottom. So let's look at it closely. So 3 over 4, multiply that by 1 and 1, because 4 times 1 is 4. And then you move to the second fraction, which is 1 over 2. So you need to do 2 times 2 to get to 4. So you need to multiply both sides by 2. So you do 1 times 2 and 2 times 2, which is equal to... 3 over 4 in the first fraction and then 2 over 4 in the second fraction. Now you add them together. This will give you 3 over 2 over 4, no, sorry, 3 plus 2 over 4, which is equal to 5 over 4. So this is actually what you call a improper fraction. It's because the numerator is actually, much, uh, is actually bigger than the denominator. So this would mean when you're dividing it, this number will be one point something. So to be precise, 5 divided by 4 will give you 1.25. So this is an improper fraction, but either way you treat it the same way as a normal fraction. But we will look at this, uh, look at this closely in a later video. Now, subtracting fractions. Subtracting fractions is the same thing as addition, adding fractions. So same way, let's look at the um, steps. So make the denominator same for the uh, fractions that are being added. You do the same thing as you did when you are adding fractions. Now, do whatever you did to the top and to the bottom for that fraction. And thirdly, you subtract the numerators. So instead of adding the numerators, you subtract the numerators. And then fourthly, you simplify. So let's move on to multiplication. So this is the easiest out of all, uh, out of the four operations with fractions. So in this one, you basically just multiply the numerators, then you just multiply the denominators, and then you simplify. Or the simplification uh, process can go above uh, you can do the simplification process at the end or you can do it at the beginning so it's it's a personal preference it doesn't really matter but usually i prefer to do it at the beginning because it's uh, much easier so let's look at an example example five multiplication if you want to have a go at yourself you can uh, pause the video now and then have a go if not let's move on so it's going to be 3 over 4 multiplied by 1 over 2. So first thing you need to do is just multiply out the numerators. So 
so you do 3 times 1, that gives you 3. Multiply out the, secondly multiply out the denominators, which give you 4 times 2, that is 8. Now you simplify it. When I say simplify, you just put it back into a fraction and just cross out anything from top and bottom. If there is anything to cross out, if not, you just leave it as it is. So in this case, the answer is 3 over 8. Now 3 over 8 it doesn't have anything to cross out, so this is the simplified multiplication fraction of the question there. So uh, of this question, this is a simplified answer. Now so let's look at another example. If you want to have a go at yourself, you can pause the video now and then um, have a go. If not, let's move forward. So in this one, you can write it like this. So 4 times 10 and then 5 times 20. So what happens in this one is, as you can see, it you can actually cancel things out. So let's do it one by one. So first of all, I'm going to cancel out the 4. So I know that 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to divide 4 from both the top and bottom. So when dividing by 4, this 4 cancels and it gives me 1. And this 20 cancels and it gives me 5. Now I, can, I see these two. So I can divide 5 from top and bottom. So I divide... 5 from bottom first, so divide 5, that gives me 1, and divide 5, that gives me 2, because 2 times 5 is 10. Now this is the simplified fraction, so you're left with 1 times 2 over 1 times 5, which is same as saying 2 over 5. So this is the simplified fraction. Now division steps. So this is a little weird one, but here's a small acronym that can help you remember it. So this is called the KFC acronym. So this applies when you're dividing two fractions together. So let's look at the acronym itself. So K, so keep the first, F for flip the second, C for change the sign. So this is the easiest way I remember it and how I remember how to divide fractions. So let's look at an example. So example seven, division. So let's take three over four divided by seven over 11. So if you wanna pause this video and have a go at yourself, you can pause it now. If not, let's move forward. So using the K, so K is keep the first. So I'm gonna keep the three over four as it is. Then F is flip the second. Now I'm gonna flip the 7 over 11 and it's going to give me 11 over 7. Now I'm going to change the sign. So when I say change the sign, it's basically do the opposite version of the sign. So opposite verse, opposite of division is actually multiplication. So you put the multiplication sign. Now what you do is you just multiply it as normal. So 3 times 11 over 4 times 7. This will give you 33 over 28. And as you can see in here, this is also an improper fraction. But not to worry, we are not looking at improper fractions now. We will look, in and look at that in a later video. So let's look at another example. Division. 3 over 5 divided by 2 over 15. So I, as before, using the KFC acronym, let's look at the f uh, first one. So K. So K is keep the first. So 3 over 5, you keep it as it is. Now flip the second. And you flip it. Uh, flip the second. So, um, so it's going to be 15 over 2. And then you change the sign. So this sign is changed into a multiplication sign. Now as you can see, you can actually simplify this down a little bit. So... As you can see, there's 5 and there is a 15. So you can actually cut down the f uh, 15 by dividing both the top and bottom by 5. So when you divide the when you divide uh, the 5 from the bottom, you get 1. And then when you divide the 15 from top, you get you're left with 3. So it's going to be 3 times 3 and over 2, which is going to be 9 over 2. 
So these are the things for fractions that you need to remember. And as a summary, so in this video, you have learned the following. So you have learned what is a fraction, how to understand fractions. So in terms of a question and context, what a fraction actually means and how to simplify fractions and what simplifying fractions actually mean and the basic operations with fractions such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So this is the end of this video and thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like the video and subscribe. Also let others know of this channel and please leave your comments down below. And if it's your first time here, make sure to check out my playlist on GCSE 91 full course content. Thank you and I will see you next time.